Hi, I'm Patu from FreeFinCal. Let's take a look at the features of the FreeFinCal stock XIRR calculator. In this calculator, you will be able to find out the proper annualized return that is the XIRR of your stock transactions after accounting for all corporate actions in the right way. Uh, usually the uh, online portals that allow you to track stock transactions they give you only the absolute return or they give you some kind of CAGR based on some weighted uh, investment years and so on. I did not want that that I wanted a proper XIRR calculation just like you calculate XIRR for an SIP or for mutual fund transactions done on different dates and so on. So this is uh, a stock XIRR calculator. You can use it in two different ways. There are two sheets. Uh, this is the single stock XIRR sheet. This is an example sheet. You can actually use the duplicate function to duplicate the sheet any number of times and uh, use it for different stocks. So for example, in this single stock XIRR sheet, I have uh, shown Asian paints as an example stock. And these are all some single uh, 111 stock uh, um, uh, purchased on different dates and the dividends are also shown here. The dividends is shown here, the, uh, they're all there. So let's run this uh, through. So the first thing you need to know is that this works only on Google Sheets. You, it uses the Google Finance function to retrieve the latest uh, stock prices and therefore this will work only on Google Sheet. The, presentation to you will be in the form of an excel sheet but the excel sheet can be used if you use only the uh, if you are uh, entering the market prices yourself uh, but uh, if you upload it on google sheets then you will be able to use the google um, uh, finance function uh, properly so it, that will not work on excel uh, excel also has a stock price fetch function but uh, you need uh, subscriptions for that and so on so i did not want to i did not want to use that i ch i chose to uh, build the sheet on uh, google sheets so the first thing that you need to enter is the stock code here that is this is the single stock xrr which means that you you can enter only the transactions of a single stock and this is the stock code this is nsc colon asian paints uh, you sometimes if it is only an indian company you can uh, uh, write down the stock code of uh, just as Asian paints a uh, paint uh, this is the stock code of NSE uh, you can find the stock codes of NSE in several different places you can just write down the code uh, even in your uh, a DMAT account it should automatically be there I have written NSE colon Asian, Asian paint simply Asian paint also will work but uh, sometimes it's better to write NSE colon Asian paint because uh, for example, in the case of Infosys or some kind of stocks which are also listed on the New York Stock Exchange or any other country stock exchange, there can be confusion and the wrong price may be retrieved. So in order to ensure that you are actually referring to a stock that's trading on the NSC or the Indian Stock Exchange, you can have this kind of a stock code. Then um, that will immediately fetch you the price. Now what happens is in uh, Google Finance, the prices are delayed by one or two days depending on when you look at it. So there is this number here uh, which is used to uh, delay the uh, price. For example, if this number is two, then the date of the price is the closing price is uh, 10 6 2021. Uh, if I make it, let me make it three and see. Sometimes it may work, sometimes it may not work. If I make it three, then it becomes 9 6. Sometimes it, if I make it four, it will become eight, six and so on. So uh, what happens is on weekdays or on uh, business days, you can leave it as two. But on weekends, uh, you may need to change it to three or four on uh, Sundays or uh, Monday mornings. Also, you may need to change it to four and so on. That doesn't matter. You can, it's a quick, uh, you, I mean, it's something you can quickly uh, get used to. But there's no other uh, uh, way around it because Google Finance has got this delay in fetching uh, stock prices and therefore there is a delay in the dates. Right. So now you can see the results straight away. I'm, I'm coming to the inputs. The inputs are here, but I'm just going to run you through the results. So you can see the uh, stock code, current market price, number of stocks. That is the number of stocks. There are 37 st stocks entered here. The current value, the total investment, the XIRR, the average years. This is the weighted average duration. So for example, the first purchase was made on 14, 6, 2019 and uh, uh, if you consider the time elapsed from that time to today and then you, you find out the time elapsed in terms of years for every one of these transactions and you calculate the weighted average in terms of the uh, investment made and that's 0.85 years so typically XIRR or CAGR 
uh, generally does not make sense uh, for uh, average years less than one. So although I've shown you an example like this with the XIRR calculation, uh, the average year should be greater than one for you to take the um, C XIRR cal uh, cal calculation seriously. At the very least, your first stock transaction should be made more than one year ago. So in this case, it is almost uh, now two years now. So you can take the XIRR seriously. But uh, CAGR, what I've done is I've just put a switch here, uh, switch here that says, if the uh, average years is less than one, then don't show the uh, CAGR. But you can always, anyway, it's an open uh, source sheet. You can always change it and you can just change it and you can get the CAGR. It's not a very big deal. Now, uh, the total dividends is shown, total gain is shown, there is a capital gain, then the uh, absolute gain is shown, um, uh, the dividend gain is shown, uh, the total gain, total gain is dividend gain plus absolute gain, that is also shown. So you get all prop, uh, practically all useful information and the, uh, the unique information to this sheet is the XIRR, which you will not be able to find uh, uh, elsewhere. Um, um, as far as I know, I have not seen a uh, XIRR where they actually reinvest uh, dividends properly and take into account corporate uh, actions and so on. So for example, you can take the you can consider uh, purchase, dividends, redemption, splits, bonuses, rights, buybacks, and so on. All this properly accounted for XIRR sheet. I have not uh, seen anywhere, and that's my that's the reason why I made the sheet. Now this is the uh, so the green cells are the inputs. So the first is the stock code input. This is the date adjustment, and then you have to enter the stock transactions so you uh, the stock code uh, is here this is the date of the transaction the type of the transaction the market price and the uh, uh, number of stocks and uh, in the case of dividends please always make sure it is the x date that is the date in which the uh, the the stock price uh, you know the the date the date in which the stock price will get reset according after the dividend is being declared don't uh, put the dividend date because the dividend date is can be uh, slightly far away from the x date and uh, that can give you uh, incorrect uh, um, you know xrr calculation also you may have sold some stocks uh, in between the x date and the dividend date and that will make the make a uh, uh, that will mess up the calculation so don't do that always use the x date and that, that is the uh, that will be the that's that's the uh, uh, con uh, convention used by sebi and that's the internationally accepted convention and that's what you should be using so this is for the single stock now um, um, i will show you how to do it for another stock uh, but before that, the second sheet is the stock portfolio sheet. So in this sheet, everything is the same, but here you can enter up to 30 stocks and you can calculate the um, uh, XIRR of your entire portfolio. So instead of just one stock code, you have 10 stock codes. I mean, I have shown you uh, whatever, 10 or 12 stock codes. These are all the stocks that I held, uh, but up to 30, you can enter here. There are spaces up for 30, the current market price, the date, the XIRR, number of stocks. Um, value, total investment, gain, CAGR and so on and so on. Everything is there. Uh, in this case, what happens is if you have liquidated a stock, for example, I have sold Coal India sometime back, then the XIRR, because you are computing all the transactions in one go and calculating the overall CAG, uh, XIRR, sorry, the overall XIRR, some individual XIRRs can be calculated. For example, Asian Paint is showing as 45.26%, Coal Pal is showing 17.35%, but Coal India says it cannot compute because it is not able to find out the, uh, because of certain nature, because of the nature of the XIRR, because it's an estimation process, you will not be able to compute the individual XIRR in this stock portfolio. But you can use the single stock XIRR, duplicate it, enter the calculations for Coal Pal or for example, ITC, which is not showing, say, which is saying could not compute and then you can, uh, you can find out the XIRR. I will just show you how to do it in a moment. So that is that. Once you enter those stock codes and you also, also have to enter all the transactions here. In this case, it's better to enter them chronologically. That is, which is the first stock transactions you made. After that, what did you buy? After that, what did you buy? Dividends, splits, whatever it is, dates, etc., etc. All those uh, information can be put in. I have shown uh, there are, this is a sample sheet and there are uh, something like uh, 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 300, uh, almost like 300, 300 transactions, more than 380, trans three, almost 380 transactions, something like that there. Now, uh, one thing that's very important is, for example, in this coal pal itself, you can see the first purchase was made on 13th October 2014. 
uh, the second purchase was made on 15th December 2014. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The first dividend was on 15th December 2014. That was that was on the dividend was offered on one one stock which you had. Then another dividend was offered on fourth uh, um, April 2015. On the Sept on the September 2015, 23rd September 2015, the split was announced. One is to one split was announced. Or I think two is to one split was announced. That is, if you hold one stock, you will get one more stock. But you must uh, be careful uh, in case. See, notice here. Uh, I have not entered the dividend dates here after the splits, but I have entered the dividend dates before the split. The the reason is, um, you, I, I, I mean, you don't need to enter the dividend dates or corporate action dates. It will be fetched automatically from Google Finance. However, Google Finance will take the split into account, and what it will do is. Because the split occurred on uh, September 2015, if you fetch the, if you try and fetch the dividend, uh, these two, uh, the price on these two dates, on these two dividends, it will show you the price after the split. That is, it, the price will be half of this, but that will be incorrect because the re, the dividend has to be reinvested in the proper uh, price at which it was applicable for you. So you will have to enter the date, the market price on any corporate action before a split. After a split, the price need not be entered. It will be automatically fetched from Google Finance. There's no problem for you. So for these dividends which are happening after the split, it will be automatically fetched. But if there is a corporate action before a split, particularly a dividend in, in this case, then you will have to enter the market price yourself uh, before a split to ensure it is the correct uh, uh, price at which the dividends are being reinvested. So that is that that's that, that's where you all enter all the transactions. And if you just scroll back here, you will get the results for the overall portfolio. This is the total investment in the portfolio, current value of the total portfolio, total dividends, capital gain, uh, the oldest transaction made, the average age of the portfolio. Uh, the, the in terms of the this is the weighted average. Uh, although the first transaction was made on 2014, the weighted average in terms of the transaction and the amount, the I mean the investment made at different dates, the weighted average is about 1.98 years only. Capital gain, gain from dividends, total gain, which is the sum of the two, then the CAGR, the XIRR. This is the XIRR. So notice there's a big difference between the CAGR and the XIRR. The, X, the CAGR is a very approximate uh, estimate. It is actually just derived directly from the absolute gain. Many of the stock portals, they will just calculate the CAGR only from the absolute gain uh, and the uh, average weighted uh, uh, portfolio years, which is 1.08. I don't appreciate that. That's I, in my opinion, that makes no sense at all because they find because they cannot calculate XIRR, they find it difficult to calculate XIRR. They show you some kind of transaction like that. That is wrong. Anyway, I've shown it for the sake of completeness, just to show you uh, what it is I have, I, I have given you. But if you want the proper annualized return, I think in my opinion, the XIRR has to be calculated after taking all corporate actions in the uh, taking uh, taking them into account in the right manner and uh, you get 28.28 percent now finally i want to show you um I, for example if you take this itc here it says it uh, the xirr cannot be computed in the stock portfolio sheet but if you take this single stock xirr let me just duplicate it so i can just call this uh, ITC, then I can uh, stock a code for ITC is NSE ITC. Let me just copy that. Then let's just delete these transactions. So I'm just going to go here and uh, you can have a Excel sheet or a spreadsheet like this, which is nicely prepared stock code, date, type, Per price, number of stocks, dividends, and so on. Uh, so what I've done is, uh, let me just, this is cold pal. Let me go to ITC. ITC should be here. Uh, this is ITC. Let's take ITC transactions. Just copy them. Go back here. And if simply paste it, then Google Sheet will ask you, uh, there'll be a small dialog box here and simply say values only. Otherwise, it'll, all the green colors will go away. Just say values only. It's up to you, uh, values only. And now you can calculate, the, you can see the uh, XIRR calculation as it shows the XIRR is minus 1.84. So I have, uh, so far I have not been, uh, I mean, in these transactions, whatever listed transactions, the XIRR is minus 1.84.
the CAGR is minus 1.99%, average year is 1.34, so on. If you notice here, there's a loss because there's a capital gain loss. Uh, if you look at the stock portfolio, where the XIR is computed for all transactions in just two columns, uh, for those of you who are familiar with XIR, in one column there will be values, in one column there will be dates. The entire uh, 300, uh, 350 transactions are there. From that transaction, so I'm trying to remove those corresponding to uh, Asian Paint, uh, XITC and so on and then I am computing individual XIRR. Uh, you, there, will be, uh, 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 there will be no difference between if the if the XIRR is giving you a number then it's well and good you don't need to do a single stock XIRR, you don't need to go to the single stock sheet and calculate it. But if for example in case of ITC it says could not compute then you will have to go to the single stock sheet and calculate the uh, XIRR and find out oh, sorry, for what it uh, Sorry, this one. What did I do? Oh, oh, here I've done it here. It's, oh my God! I, I I just used the wrong sheet. I I call this Asia ITC, but I I just put it in a single stock XIR itself. It says um, uh, for for situations where I uh, you cannot compute, you can go to the uh, you can create a sheet like this, duplicated any number of times. Uh, enter the correct stock code, enter the correct transactions and you can find out the individual stock XIRR here. So you can use it in two different ways and uh, there are many many uh, ways. I have tried it for uh, splits, dividends and uh, uh, purchases and redemptions and so on. Uh, 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 you can, I mean there are um, a myriad of possibilities and uh, uh, options available in terms of how long you have been using your portfolio, all the kind of different uh, corporate actions you have seen and so on. So um, let me know uh, after you use the sheet uh, about your feedback and I will uh, try to uh, you know take that into account uh, uh, as quickly as possible. Bye-bye.